The robot testing pattern is a testing architecture that can be used to write Espresso UI tests on Android. You've probably heard about application architectures like MVP or MVVM, but you probably haven't heard much about test architectures. Establishing an architecture in any code base is important because as a project grows, the cost to maintain it rises unless you introduce logical layers of separation like testing robots. Here we have a bunch of Espresso tests that we have written. Each test contains logic to interact with a specific screen on the Android device. The problem about this is that if one element on the screen changes, then all of our tests are now broken. If we introduce test robots, we can share the code that is used to interact with the screen. And when something changes in the UI, we only need to update the code in the robot itself, and not in every test. By using robots, we can separate out what we are testing from how we are actually testing it to facilitate decoupled code. This increases readability and maintainability. While the robot pattern is a newly coined term for Android, the concept of the robot pattern has been around a long time and is similar to page objects, which was used originally for testing web applications. The goal of both is to create a logical abstraction on top of implementation for interacting with your user interface. The basic rule of thumb for a robot is that it should allow a UI test to do anything and see anything that a human can. It should also provide an interface that is easy to program to and hides the underlying implementation. Here's the login screen for our application. We've created a list of actions that the user can perform on the screen. Each one of these actions should be encapsulated by one method on the robot. Here's what the Java usage of this robot would look like. Each robot we create will be responsible for interacting with a specific screen of your application. By having each robot work on only a specific screen, we can provide concise contextual method names and create logical separation. For each method on the robot, there is an underlying implementation that performs its actions with Espresso. As you see here, the robots use the builder pattern. This is used to shorten syntax and increase readability. When using the builder pattern, each method returns this, which is the robot object itself, allowing us to chain method calls together in a single line. Since each method on a robot is responsible for a specific action, methods on a robot can be called in any order. This allows tests to be written for any flow through your application. The first method on the login robot is a method named username. It takes a single parameter of type string and is responsible for setting the username on the correct UI element. The subsequent methods also encapsulate a single action and the UI element that will be interacted with. The robot's implementation, or the how, is responsible for performing these actions with the view and espresso. As mentioned earlier, there should be one robot per screen of your application. This allows you to create contextual methods for each robot and use simple, easy to understand method names. Many UI tests span multiple screens in an application. Here's an example of a flow through our app that goes all the way from the login screen to the home screen, which displays a list of categories, that goes to the fruits category that we've clicked on, and then finally the pineapple item detail page, where we can then add that item to our cart. As you see, we use the same login robot code that we used in the past example, but we also use the other robots in this example because it's a multi-screen test. The home robot is responsible for interacting with the home screen, which has that list of categories. You can see that we want the category fruits and the underlying implementation of that robot will find the item in the list and select it. Clicking on the fruits category brings us to the page which displays various types of fruit. We can use the category robot, which is used for interacting with the category page, to select the item pineapple. When we click on that, then that opens up the pineapple item detail screen. At this point, all we need to do is use the item robot to add the pineapple to our cart, and we finish this test scenario. Now we have a good high-level understanding of what the robot testing pattern is and how to get started.